Good evening. This is DSP News. Them reliable ones. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Snore Purnell, DSP Gaming. Apparently, Phil is having a bit of problems. He's having some trouble with reaching the monthly goal. And apparently, Patreon has been uh, pushed back to the forefront. Now, Phil, I've told you before. Hi, Phil. I know you're watching. We all do. I told you before, Phil, that when you before you even, you know, when you sat there, well, not even before, but when you started making this this announcement that I'm gonna, you're gonna jump over to Twitch and become a full-time Twitch streamer, I told you that you need to take care of YouTube because Patreon was linked to YouTube. Now, at first you try to play, you know, you try to play Patreon off of Twitch and then you realize there's just way more money to be had if you kept them separate. Then you decided, oh, well, for, for, for the Patreon goals each month, you know, you guys can just come over there to Twitch and if you guys sub here and then donate here, then you guys have a voice. That was a nice little, that was a nice little bit of double dipping that you had pulling there, Phil. But I also told you that was only going to work in the short term. Now, YouTube views, eh. Twitch views, eh. That's definitely down. Subs are definitely down. And coming off of that debacle of when keeping it Phil goes wrong, Twitter edition, you're in a world of hurt. A world of hurt. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm recording this currently on May, Wednesday, May 23rd. And it's, and, uh, Mimology 101, shouts out to, uh, 101. He just put up a video, I think this morning, maybe, or it might've been yesterday. It might've been yesterday where Phil is already done with state of the K2. It wasn't necessarily a rage quit. I guess he's, I guess he's done with it because, you know, there's still a couple of other games coming out and he's looking for that. So don't hold me to that. That when, from what I watched of the video, that's what it looked like to me. It looked like Phil's done with state of the K2 after you went sat there and, kicked up all that dust into all those people's faces about them being shills and whatnot, and then going back and saying, oh, I didn't mean it that way, and try to manipulate your fan base into believing you, like all these other streamers were just dead-ass wrong because they're all just criminals and none of them are real gamers, and they all just whore themselves out for views. That's cute. And uh, for you, only for you to be finished with the game after four days. Four days early, to be exact. Yes, these people were given the game a week early, but you got the game four days early. So they beat you by two or three days. And you thought you had the nerve to go up there and cast judgment on them? That's neither here nor there. The backlash, if you would want to call it that, is that Phil, Phil's Twitch is failing. I think right now he has set the goal for 425 to be the sub goal. I think he's currently at like 380 something. He's somewhere in the 380s. It's not looking very good. And this is of Phil's own doing. Phil, I don't know why you don't listen. Like, people give you really good advice and you just don't want to pay attention to it. So now you want... <laughs> and now, So now you want your the fan base to come up with ideas to how for them to how... Sorry. You want them to come up with ideas on how to fix this. But if the fan base had listened to what I told them, let Phil bleed out. And then you guys will have control. When Phil gets down, gets to the point of desperation where he has to go to you guys for ideas, let him continue to sweat. Let him bleed. And then you've got him. And then you have real control over him. The games that you want him to play, he'll have to play it because he'll nothing else is going to be interesting. I haven't seen the greatness that is Snorp Brunel's video yet. But if I had to guess, if I had to guess, he's going to bring up ideas that he's had previously that failed. Now... Uh, the, he's had a couple of ideas that really, that were just really bad ideas, to be honest with you. And I'm glad that some of you didn't throw your hard earned money or your parents hard earned money towards it. But the idea that stands out the most, the one that he was really banking on to work was that cooking show with Kat. 
that reoccurring or that that ongoing series that he wanted to set up. He was really banking that you guys were going to, you know, put money on that and you didn't. And I'm proud that you guys didn't because it was just exploitation of her. Now, all of a sudden, since no one wants that, Phil has put Cat on the shelf. If Cat's even there, which comes back to this interesting theory that, um, I guess the other night on pre-stream, I had missed it at the, that particular day. Must have been working late or something. But, uh, Phil was, someone asked Phil what was he having for dinner. And, uh, I think it's probably Yolo Dopper or somebody was asking what he's having for dinner. And he says he's having frozen lasagna. He didn't say, well, he said he was having lasagna. We know it's going to be frozen, but he didn't say that Cat was making lasagna. He said he was having lasagna, which means it's probably frozen, which is what it ended up turning out to be. Swanson to the rescue. Where's Cat at? If she's not cooking, is she working those extra hours? Is she starting to go ahead and stack her chips? Coming to the realization, I got to get up out of there. Has someone decided to slide right in rather early and go ahead and give her that long stroke? We don't know. We don't know. And I haven't launched the investigation yet because uh, let's let it play out for a little while. Let, let's let's watch him sweat a little bit. But back to those who are who contribute to Phil, you're catching Phil at a time where he's extremely desperate. There's some new games coming out. Let's say State of the K2 is done for. He's, you got what? Detroit is human. You have H1Z1, which I was on Twitter just a minute ago, and a, apparently Phil is advertising uh, their, either loot boxes. It's either a loot crate, I guess, for H1Z1. He's promoting that now. He has a code that you can go through, and he gets a kickback, whatever the case may be. So he's shilling, I guess. Whatever. You know, he, he's, you know, apparently... I guess I guess that's what one would call it, you know what I'm saying? But whatever, he's doing that now, and he's waiting for Street Fighter to come out, 30th anniversary, and as you guys all know, <laughs> it'll be hunting season the day that comes out, and whatnot. And some of the people on on Twitter know what I'm talking about when I when I say that. So, <laughs> but in any case, let's get to the video. But I do say this in closing, for any of you who contribute to Phil. There is never, I wouldn't say there's never been a time, but you're getting to the precipice of where you can really have control and you can really force Phil to play the games you want. I will say this as a disclaimer, there's no guarantee he'll finish them, but he'll more than likely be willing to play them because he has no other choice. He's pushed himself, he's buried himself, I should say, in such a way to where even his peers on Twitter, or on Twitch and on Twitter, just don't really want nothing to do with him. He attacked damn near a whole industry and again, and a particular practice, whether you agree with it or not, that people do make their livelihoods off of. He's There was gonna be blowback, but that's neither here nor there. Let's get into the video. Ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News, always late, never breaking, unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. You guys all know the slogan. It's time to watch me work. Sound good? Sounds great. Also, it's been kind of funny. A lot of people were talking about this on, uh, on pre uh, earlier this morning on the stream chat. So I'll just say this. Guys, just be beware of uh, basically fibbers. There's a lot of people who've been around recently and they're like, well, if Phil does this today, I will donate money or I will cheer. As I said, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Snorpernell DSP Gaming <laughs> without ideas uh, for what to do to reach the Twitch goals. This was published by Snorpernell on May 22nd. I'm currently recording this on May 23rd. Yeah. Or, you know, I will sub, and then they don't do it. <laughs> ah, the salty tears. In the past couple of months, I, I had three separate people tell me they were going to donate a PlayStation because they've seen how many ridiculous audio issues I have with my current PS4. And the Actually, I can't remember if it was Volt Boy or, or um, S. Julius Cruz. I can't remember whose video it was. It might have been S. Julius Cruz, where they had... Um, they had made, they had made the argument that the audio is just fine. It's his headset. It's his, uh, it's his, um, it's his, uh, Astros that might actually be the problem. Whether they're not connected properly, whether he has to make some adjustments to it, to it, whatever the case may be. Because he, um, it was said that the stream and the audio was going through just fine for everybody else. It just wasn't working well for him. 
So more than likely, it's the headphones. It might not actually be the PlayStation at all. It's just something to throw out there. You know, just for anybody who's interested. Shouts out to both of them, by the way. Of course, they're all liars. They're just, you know, trolling. And I honestly... Shouts out to Mighty D also. And James Lesser Express Link. Also, let me jump in here for... Uh, jump back in. Phil, when someone says that they're willing to contribute something to you, they don't really... I mean, that's between, essentially, you and them. So why would you put the rest of the dogs out on this? They don't have a... They don't... They don't have anything in this fight, essentially. This is, that transaction is between whoever said that they were willing to contribute something to you and you. That's it. They don't have to look out for that. What are you going to do? Sweat somebody who's like, oh, Phil, I'll give you five extra dollars if you can win this match. No. That's between you and them. And if, and if they come through, they come through. If they don't, they don't. You should take everything with a grain of salt, to be honest with you. It sounds like someone who's desperate. That's what it sounds like. And, Phil, you need to just break down and just get that PS4 Pro. It is what it is. I'm not going to say that your PS4 isn't in bad shape for, to be honest, what you look at your surroundings. It, of course, it's in bad shape. But in any case, no one owes you anything. If they do it, they do it. If they don't, they don't. I honestly think you should have taken that that, uh, that free television um, a few months back, but whatever. That's just me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really believe any of them. I know you're lying. Um... But it's just frustrating when they come on the stream and they'll do a cheer. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, donate a PS4 Pro. And then, you know, and they're obviously they're full of crap. Okay, salt, 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 salt. It's open now. I'm getting my mouth overpowered with salt flavor. Yesterday we had a guy who says, if you get 10 straight wins in Ultra Street Fighter 2, I will donate $100. Okay, I got 24 straight wins. The guy vanished. <laughs> what a surprise, right? Didn't say another word in the stream chat. Um. Oh, yeah, I watched the. Uh... I actually watched Almighty Tevin's stream on that. I think that was on Sunday, maybe? That might have been on Sunday when he when Phil did that. Or it might have been Monday. Eh, it was Sunday or Monday. It was one of the two. When um, he did his send-off for Street Fighter. And uh, I remember um, watching him and how he was trying to win every match. And he's been doing that for a while now. Um, and I think one of the reasons that comes behind that is he was tired of seeing these compilations where they show only his losses. And he talked about it in a pre-stream, where he was becoming, he was basically upset that only his losses were being showed and none of his wins. So he was literally trying his damnest to win, <laughs> to win every fight, to win every single match. And when he lost, oh my God, the salt was just in free flow. It's just like ancient Rome or something. Um, it It's, I mean, it shows you how much he has riding on Street Fighter. You know what I mean? Not just the game, but the series. He has everything on that. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's the only thing that he can hold on to. It's the only thing he can... It's the only thing he can... It's the only thing he can raise up and be like, look, I did this at one time or another. It's all he has. You know what I mean? It's different with like... Um, for example, I had a I had a conversation. It wasn't an argument. <laughs> it could have been an argument, but cooler heads prevailed. But... uh. It was like a conversation that I had with somebody on Twitter about, like, Dr. Disrespect, where uh, Dr. Disrespect likes to go ahead and be like, I'm the two-time, you know, blockbuster champion or whatever the hell that was. That was way before my time. But, like, uh, where he likes to kind of hang his hat on that, so to speak. And there's nothing wrong with that, but, or he, he likes to boast about it, but he doesn't hang his hat on it. That's not his existence. You know what I'm saying? He has so much more than that. He's accomplished so much more than that. You know what I mean? And Phil's never, Phil never, he never tried to be more than that, essentially. And if he did, he failed at it. Which is a harsh thing to say, but it, it's, it's true, if you think about it. So, there you go with that. Yes, we News. This kind of stuff happens all the time. It's not a big deal. Quite honestly, I actually am shocked when someone actually says something and then actually does it. And, you know, every once in a while we get some very generous people. Uh, yesterday, we had the patriarchy. He said, if you do a level 7 turn plunge, right, I'll send you a nice generous tip. And I got a level 8 turn plunge, and he, he, he came through. So you get the nice people paired with the kind of the, the fakers, and, you know, it, it definitely evens out. You know, as I said, I'm not complaining at all. You know, there's some people, oh my god. You sound, you sound a certain type of way about it, though. It sounds like you had, you had some high hopes for it. You know what I mean? You sound very disappointed. It sounds like, you know, with that whole Wolverine figurine... So, if none of this really bothered you, why did you even bring it up? Why would you ask 
you know, the mods and everybody else to kind of be on high alert when stuff like this happens if it wasn't bothering you. One would just let that go. Eh, that's just me. I'm just a dog in a sharp suit. Phil, your Patreon is down. Oh, yes. Ah, yes, the Patreon. So, Patreon is currently at 146... I guess it's like 146 people that are contributing to it. And he's somewhere between the six and $800 range. Something along those lines. But let's bring that back for a minute. I can try and, to give you guys you know, a number. You know, it definitely evens out. You know, as I said, I'm not complaining at all. You know, there's some people, oh my God, Phil, your Patreon is down. Oh boy. He's at 145 patrons and he only has $675. God damn. Wow, that, wow, that hurts. Okay, let's let's break this down a little bit. Why is it, ladies and gentlemen, that Phil is where he's at as it pertains to Patreon? Well, a couple of reasons. One, he uh, his um, his new cash cow, Twitch, was the new lick. It was the new it was the new plot. It was the new uh, the new ATM. So he hasn't been focusing on it. That's the first thing. Second thing is is the people who probably were contributing to Patreon on a regular basis. This can be broken up into a couple of groups. One, those are the people who were banned, so they were like, well, fuck them. Two, they were the people who were like, well, he's not going to finish a game anyway, or he's not going to finish the games that we're going to vote for, so forget it. Three, the ones who like the longer Japanese-eccentric type games, or just the long narrative type games. Phil says he doesn't want to play those because, oh, my throat hurts. Oh, oh. whatever. And uh, so that kind of cuts them out. You know what I mean? He's he's done a pretty good job at... Uh, He's done a pretty good job at cutting off the people in his fan base who, in turn, contributed quite a bit for this kind of new streaming lifestyle, which is short and fleeting, to be honest. And for those who are still contributing to Patreon, they're probably trying to contribute to him on Twitch, too. And they can't do both. Look at Swaggins. Swaggins doesn't even doesn't even care about trying to give subs no more. He's going after Brightside Vikings um, uh, support records. He wants those. That's what he, he's, if I, I'm not that I know Swaggins because I don't, but if I had to guess, Swaggins is like, man, I could have myself up there on the leaderboard over Brightside Viking. Pfft, who cares about some, some, uh, some gifted subs that are going to expire in 30 days? I could go for that and be up there pretty much for as long as Phil will be streaming. Take your pick. So that's what I think, in my own personal opinion, that's what that's come down to. Um, it goes back to what I said earlier. Phil should have, he should have taken care of YouTube and he should have taken care of, of uh, Patreon when he moved over to Twitch. Instead, he tried to be lazy and combined them. And now there you go. Now he's putting up, well, even Spooning One has better numbers than this. But he's essentially going the Spoonie route in a lot of ways. He's killing himself. And uh, it's a shame, but sadly, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that I didn't see this coming. And I'm sure no one did. Except for Phil, of course. Dude, my Patreon. I haven't focused on my Patreon in so long. And as you know, nothing is really based around my Patreon anymore. All my goals are based off of the stream. Which, by the way, is what everyone told me to do. I, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Right? No, 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 no. That's not true at all. People were saying that, well, Phil, if you're Phil, if you're going to go ahead and start doing Patreon goals that are going to be related to Twitch, then shouldn't people on Twitch have more of a say-so? You know what I'm saying? Or should they have an equal say-so to people on YouTube? If I remember correctly, that's essentially how the conversation went, plus or minus a couple of things. You decided to go to the extreme of that and just cut basically people on YouTube out and focus completely on Twitch. If you said, and I quote, if those people, some of the people in my fan base just don't have good enough or do not have uh, stable enough internet that they can come to my Twitch streams. So in turn, Twitch is the future. So this is where I need to focus my, my attention on. That doesn't mean I'm leaving people out on YouTube. You'll still, you know, get all of the raw uncut gameplay and everything, but I have to focus the goals more to Twitch. No one asked you for that. You chose to do that. You could have come to a compromise with it, but you decided to go all in. You moved all of your eggs, rotten rotten eggs or not. You decided to move them from 
one basket that's decaying to a brand new basket that's not even fully woven and it screwed you. Just saying. DSP News. Everyone told me, change your goals. Don't have them be based off Patreon anymore. Do them based off of Twitch. So I did, and now we don't hit the, the goals anymore. You know? <laughs> like, when we did Patreon goals, we frequently hit them. That's 100% a lie. Indeed. <laughs> the Patreon was, was in a down, was going downhill at the time anyway. So that, that's not necessarily true either. And then that ends up going into another interesting argument where Phil was padding some of the Patreon goals to make it look like they actually hit him, even though they really didn't. But that's neither here nor there. Then I switched over to doing it based off of Twitch subs, and now we don't hit the goals anymore. Well, obviously, sometimes you, you get bad advice, I guess. I don't know what else to say, you know? Like, I definitely uh, want to grow the Twitch channel. I want. And like Snow now says, he's always blaming someone else. And he never did anything wrong. Here's the problem, though, Phil. It's kind of like the same thing with that tweet situation you had recently. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, I thought it only goes to, to people in my fan base. Oh, the people who read it. Um, first off, how do they read it? Oh, it's my haters who sent it to them and whatnot. It somehow grew legs and walked its way over there to them. And, and they, they just completely took everything I said out of context. And the reason why that was is because the haters sent them files among files of of all the terrible things I've done and didn't uh, send them anything or tell them anything that I've actually done good and so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. He was getting to the point where he spun the whole situation to where it was almost like he didn't even make the tweet. Yeah, he was saying I'm a dumbass and I shouldn't have made the tweet, so on and so forth, but then when you go ahead and see, the when, as you see the story start to float out, it's the thing breaks down to, oh, well, how do these people see the tweet? Oh, who brought them the tweet? Oh, why they misinterpret the tweet? But none of that's my fault, though. At the end of the day, he can't accept the fact that you made you said something stupid, and it made its rounds. And you could have just been a man about it and been like, you know what, hey man, I'm sorry, whatever, whatever. Instead, you actually try to confront some of these people, and they ended up bashing you, and to the point where you couldn't necessarily fight back anymore. You realize that the negative attention is coming up, and you decided, okay, I'm just going to take the L, erase the tweet, and then say I'm sorry. But yet he's still uh, sitting on his love seat now scared that Twitch is still going to come and hit him with some type of infraction, which you would think they might they might actually do so, but they haven't done it yet. Is Was that tweet worth him getting banned off Twitch? Eh, not, no. No, to, to be honest. Not really. But wasn't doesn't it say in the new terms of service that Twitch does monitor what their partnered channels do? Phil is a partner channel. When he says stuff like that, he represents Twitch. Yet, where's the repercussions for it? Shouts out to It's a Gundam and Almighty Tevin. <laughs> I hope one of them are at least proud of that. <laughs> just to keep going, this is the, I get more money now from Twitch than I do from YouTube. Real talk. And obviously I want my Twitch channel to grow. But obviously building these monthly goals off of the Twitch subs have not worked. You know? Quite frankly, it just has not worked. At all. I'm not a whiny baby. I'm a mature adult. And I'm not a children's entertainer. Sure is it. Um, so I need to... Basically what I need to do... Is kind of sit back and maybe for the month of June reevaluate stuff. Because obviously if we're not hitting the Twitch goal for subs, even though I, I keep readjusting it and lowering it and lowering it, and we're still not hitting it. <laughs> so then that should tell you there's a problem. How is it that you're pushing the goal post further and further forward and yet you're still not hitting it? You know what I'm saying? Why are you going why are you going backwards instead of going forward? You think you think if you lower it, it somehow you're gonna hit the sub goal? That's not how that works. If people want to contribute, they will. If they don't, they don't. Oh boy, I can't wait to start streaming. <laughs> and then I, you know, now Patreon supports now. Obviously, you know, it's because there's a loss of focus. And so I need to maybe refocus some, somewhere, right? Whether one or the other. Because the way I'm doing it now ain't working. People obviously are not being motivated to subscribe to the channel and they're not being motivated to pledge to Patreon. Snow Brunello's right again. I mean, he can't entertain an audience. And that's one of the major problems that Phil has. Phil believes that his streams are entertaining. He believes that people are having a good time. How is that possible when someone's getting banned almost every other day, if not almost every day? He killed his own viewership off. And then the gifted sub situation didn't help you, Phil. People told you that. Uh, told you that. It was artificial inflation. And it was going to come back and hurt you. And yet you let them do it anyway because you just wanted the quick buck. 
Now look at you. It's You're in full-on deflation, and you can't do anything about it. And people, and then the people that you do trust, the cash cows or cash pigs or piggy banks, even none of them are whales, they all have their own agendas when they throw their money out there, which makes it even more dangerous. Because, well, not dangerous as in they're going to hurt them, but you know what I mean. Like, because they have an agenda that's not focused on Phil, you know, like I said, Swaggin's chasing records. He's chasing, he's chasing Brightside Viking. He's not out there to help Phil now. He's out to beat somebody else out. Which it goes back to something that Almighty Tevin had said recently where Phil's fans, at least some of them, aren't really Phil's fans. You know, Phil, they're only on Phil's side because they want to go at people who hate Phil. That's it. And this is the type, uh, this is the type of environment Phil has has fostered, and he can't escape it. So when he talks, like in the last video, or in the upcoming video, I haven't, I'm not sure which order I'm gonna post it yet. When Phil talks about his racism or whatnot, if Phil had stayed on that path, just imagine what his fan base would be like. Look at his Nazi chat now, and the racism and the bullshit that goes on in there. Just imagine if he went full Hitler, you know? Or Pitler, as I like to call it, because Phil's always sweating excessively for some strange-ass reason. So just imagine if he went full, full-fledged, you know, Heil Pitler. Then what? You know what I'm saying? Then what? So yeah, now you got these people who are going to throw all kinds of money at you, but no one wants to sponsor that. No one wants to deal with that mess. You see people on Twitch all the time getting banned for the bullshit that goes on in their chat. And half the time, they don't even say anything in the fact that they were the one who, you know, spit out whatever was said. It's what's going on in the chat. People monitor that stuff. And that leads up to another question. How is it that Twitch is supposedly monitoring, monitoring your chat? monitoring what you do offside off of their site if you are a partner of theirs but yet Phil gets away with what he gets away with consistently how does that work right and that and I think in the end that's the overall message that or that's the overall takeaway from this Twitter situation all eyes have now been put on Phil Brunel and now you have other Twitch streamers that looked at some of the stuff that he's done and are wondering you're going to get on us and send us warnings and give us 24-hour, one-week, 30-day suspensions for some of the stuff that we're doing, and it's nothing nearly as bad as what he's doing. And how is he only? How is he still getting away with stuff? It's a good question. And that's what Phil should be worried about. So I think I need to figure out how to do this, all right? I'm going to think about it a little bit. If you guys have suggestions on how to make it work, please, by, by all means, let me know. Um... So I'm going to think about it. And I'm going to try to figure this out. But if you guys have ideas, I'll scratch my plan of me doing anything and you guys can do it for me. For shame. For shame. But, you know, it sucks that, you know, we started out real strong this year. If you remember, at the end of last year, we were crazy strong. The tr channel was constantly growing. Subs were way up. Because keep in mind, subs were at a massively discounted rate at the end of 2017 and early 2018. Which is probably why my subs went so high, right? Uh, and so I was basing monthly goals off these subs because that was what was white hot. And then that fizzled out. And then patron support dipped. And it's like, well, what the hell, you know? I, quote, real talk, I'm in a situation, guys, as you know, where I'm in jeopardy this year. You know, I'm not talking about it. And yet again, Mr. Brunel's right. The, the business is slowly dying. But Phil knew that, though. Phil knew that every move he made, for the most part, since he went on Twitch, was all short-term gains. Uh, gains. Th there was nothing stable there. He built, he built his castle, Gautopia, as I like to call it. He built Gautopia on sand. In empty um, Mountain Dew Kickstarter cans. It's all it was. There was nothing stable there, and eventually it was going to slide over. He had to have known this. He puts less effort into Twitch than he ever did on YouTube, if you think about it. And he got paid for it. He was rewarded for it, even. But now, it's not going so well. He was in decline before the Twitter situation. The Twitter situation just kind of puts a stamp on it. When keeping it Dave goes wrong was probably one that is... It's not necessarily his death nail, but yet again, it's just piling up. It's certainly another nail, you know, on the left side of the coffin. Phil's already in it. 
people are just waiting to close it up now. It doesn't, it's, I mean, we all saw this coming. He didn't, but the rest of us did. All the time, but I'm already behind on taxes. Oh, yeah, I'll never get in trouble for taxes. <laughs> no lies because I need the money. Right now with this whole tax situation I'm in, I need the money. And laughing it up, laughing it up because of the hideous scam of me saying that I had tax issues this year, right? I, you know, I am, and I'm supposed to pay more taxes next month, and I don't have the money for it. Um, so I'm going to be six months behind on taxes here. Wait a second, six months on tax? What? What? Huh. And by the end of the year, I need to find a way to earn all these and pay them, or else I'm in hot water. If I don't pay my taxes this year, I'm, I'm screwed. Uh, you know, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to sell my house. By the way, hint, hint. Save the house. Help! And the thing is... Well, it looks like we have a This Is How You Don't Pay Taxes coming up. <laughs> I'm really going to try to be catchphrase, catchphrase king this year. I'm really shooting for that. But, um... Okay, so it looks like taxes are coming back into the mix. We all knew that. Um... It looks like it's coming. It's going to come up a little sooner than we expected. But... <sighs> Jesus, Phil. Jesus, Phil. I'm trying to maintain people coming in and enjoying the streams and watching this stuff on YouTube and the like. And it's funny because if you actually look at YouTube, YouTube's good. And the bottom line is it doesn't matter. Like my Twitch, my, my, my YouTube videos um, are what they are. You know, I know for a fact my YouTube viewership has dwindled because I've been focusing way more on, on Twitch um, in particular. So I know that not as many people go and even watch me on YouTube anymore. YouTube. I was watching Arjun's uh, stream the other day, and uh, it's a great stream, by the way. You guys should really check it out. If I remember to, I'll put it, link it in my description. Shouts out to Arjun. And he said that uh, it's possible Phil has, uh, what's it called, like Asperger's, where like he just kind of spews shit off without really thinking. Um, I don't think Phil has that. I think Phil's just an idiot. But yet again, this is the stuff that gets Phil in trouble. This is why people call him out. Because you can't say that, oh, YouTube's just fine. You know, YouTube's doing okay. But then, like, a day or two ago, oh, you know, subs are down, you know, you know, donations are down, no one's buying anything from Teespring, you know, no one's doing this, that, and the third, and, and, and YouTube, you know, ad revenue on YouTube is terrible. You, you, you can't say, you can't do stuff like this, Phil. You have to pick a narrative and stick to it, at least for a month or two, you know what I'm saying? You can't just flip-flop each day. And I don't know if that comes from the fact that, like, he believes that his fan base really doesn't listen to him or he really thinks they're idiots. So he thinks he can just spin the narrative on a day by day basis and he can get away with it. And maybe that's what the case is. You know what I'm saying? Is it the best type of manipulation? I wouldn't think so, but the man's getting away with it. What can you really say about it? Views have been consistent. YouTube's good. The problem is YouTube ad revenue is all over the place. One week it'll be sky high. The next week there's none. And it's the same viewership on YouTube. Like, what the fuck can I do with that, right? Yeah, he, yeah, there you go. He's constantly contradicting himself. Constantly. And nobody, and for, not nobody, I wouldn't say that, but very few people in his fan base are willing to speak out against it. So then he just keeps doing it. And yet again, it goes back to this thing with Twitch. They keep enabling him to have this bad behavior, so he keeps getting away with it. You know? The, over the last couple days, coming off of that Twitter situation... That was probably the most nervous that I've seen him in a little while as it pertains to he might actually lose streaming. At least on Twitter. I mean on Twitch, sorry. But then again, there's there's you know, there's other ways you can go about it now. You can go back to YouTube. Um, I hear it's a bit you know, I hear a lot of people are going to Facebook and streaming off that. So I mean he's still got options, but what are you gonna do? I'm good at lying. <laughs> very, very, very hypocritical. Right? It's just ridiculous. Um, so YouTube is kind of this weird X factor that I can't control. So really, what can I control? You know, I'm trying to control the Twitch stuff. And it's been good. I mean, I'm, again, I'm not going to complain. You guys have been very supportive. Cheer subs and tips have always been consistently good. Um, this month in particular, you guys kind of rallied earlier in the month and helped me out, and I appreciate that. And you, again, every stream's been consistently good. It's very rarely has been like a dry stream. So in that regard, everything's great. It's just that it, I don't know how to base these goals right now. Because every day people come out, oh my god, the subs went down. Oh my god, Patreon support's down. Well, what do you want me to do? I'm sitting here putting out the entertaining streams every day. People would tell me they're enjoying them. So what do I do to make that change? I don't know. You know, that's why I need your feedback, okay? 
And people are saying, my Patreon dropped. I don't know. I'm not looking at my Patreon. A silver-tongued talker, right? Oh, I'm just going to say it one way, and hopefully you'll believe it, even though it's not the truth. And that's literally what's happening here. The guy's a liar. The guy's a fucking blatant liar. Mm. And lying to everyone. Yep. But people are believing it because they don't know any better. Exactly. I really don't anymore. Real talk. I used to. <clears throat> I don't really look at it anymore. Because I think looking at micromanaging and stuff like that is not productive. Yeah, okay. I just don't. Uh, <laughs> but watching detractor videos are. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, if people want to pledge to my Patreon and get some of the really awesome perks, they can, and they know it's supportive because I mention it every single day here on stream. I only mention it once here on the pre-stream, but I do mention it every single day here on stream. All right? I've got a Teespring merchandise shop. Real talk, it's great stuff, mm. but no one's bought anything in a while. Like, my God, please, you gotta tip me because I have no money. I need dope, that money. I really do. I need that money uh -huh. to pay my bills. Sure we need more money. We need more money. That's what this stream is about. It's been over three weeks since anyone bought anything from my shop. Now, I know I haven't had anything new there. At the same time, the merchandise line that's there right now is quite good. Wrong. Wrong all day. The reason why no one's buying anything from Teespring or whatever the case may be is because they're all trying to focus all of their efforts on stream. And giving them money there. Or giving him money there, I should say. That's why. He's gotten to the point, or he was at one point. He was giving, getting $5 donations. I was watching it uh, through Tevin's stream. He was getting like $5 donations and he was just ignoring them. He must have done that a few times. And whether they were coming from the same person or multiple people, you don't ignore that. Or you shouldn't. If that's the case, then make the minimum... Uh, make the minimum uh, cheer... Or donation or whatever the case, ten bucks, and go from there. Just saying. Wrong, 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 wrong. wrong. You're wrong. Shout out. <laughs> Number one, the lolly cop cheered and said, "Uh, you need to know that Patreon isn't doing well. Is there a way to hype the fans to pledge to keep up the good work?" Well, first of all, again, I don't know if Patreon dropped dipped or not or whatever. What I can tell you is there's one person who was a long-standing large pledgee, and they did write me a nice personal message last night explaining they've got stuff going on in their own life. They can't do the $50 pledge anymore, but they're still going to come by my streams. They're still going to contribute. Uh, and I was like, listen. Well, actually, I take that back. I didn't respond yet because they wrote to me late last night. But to that... You saw... Did you catch that there? Here, let me bring it back for just a second. He had a good reason for saying why he didn't write him back. Keep up the good work. Well, first of all, again, I don't know if Patreon dropped, dipped or not or whatever. What I can tell you is there's one person who was a long-standing large pledgee, and they did write me a nice personal message last night explaining they've got stuff going on in their own life. They can't do the $50 pledge anymore, but they're still going to come by my streams. They're still going to contribute. Uh, and I was like, listen. Well, actually, I take that back. I didn't respond yet because they wrote to me late last night. But to that, if, this is the, the bottom. Okay, no, here's the bottom line. If he had written that guy back, it it's fair to say he would have actually checked Patreon. He would have either checked, he would have written the guy back, said, hey, no problem, or whatever the case may be, then checked Patreon, or he checked Patreon, and then he wrote the guy back. And that's why he, he abandoned that part of the story right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Because let's be honest, Phil's never had a problem with being up late. So let's, let's, let's cut that out right now. So that's why I think he caught himself there. But that's just my opinion, of course. Come on, guys. I appreciate long-standing support. I do. If you're a long-standing sub here on Twitch, if you've been a long-standing pledgee on Patreon, I really do appreciate that. But listen, stuff happens, right? In life, stuff happens. You know, at one point in my life, I was a long-standing supporter of the Angry Video Game Nerd and that guy with the glasses. Way back when. We're talking about 10 years ago before I ever started making videos for YouTube. I supported both of those guys. And after a while, I said, you know what, now I'm getting into my own stuff. Now, you know, I'm moving into my own place. i got big bills coming up. You know, I've got other stuff to worry about than, you know, doing stuff. And, you know, I understand that. Doing stuff. What are, you, what are you trying to say there, Phil? Are you trying to say that you sent them money? Are you saying that you donated to, to their Patreon? Or not Patreon. Patreon wasn't around back then, I don't think. Uh, you donated to their PayPal's? Is that what you're saying? Because I feel like you would just come out and say that, but you're not. And I think the reason why is because you don't want to get caught in a lie later. Just saying. I, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> the, the, the story needs to go somewhere. All right. Listen, everyone in life has life-changing things. And even if you absolutely support someone and like someone, sometimes you can't do it. I am incredibly grateful for any support that I get from anyone. Period. All right. You will never hear me complaining 
because someone was supporting me and decided that they couldn't do it anymore. That's ridiculous. That's incredibly just being un and ingrate. That's like me. Ree! Right. That's like me. Ree! Basically, and I would never be like that. So all I want to say is to anyone who supported me over the years, thanks for the money, dummies, because that's exactly what you fucking are, a bunch of fucking empty-headed idiots who paid me money to get absolutely nothing out of it. Thanks. <laughs> like someone could misinstrue that. I feel such an idiot. <laughs> he really is. He's he's delusional to a point where it's almost scary if you think about it. When because if you went ahead if, if someone went on his stream right now and and put that this quote out there, I guarantee you his first response is either to ignore it or deny it that he never said that. He's never said anything like this before. Just constantly talking out of his ass. Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. So, it is what it is, you know? That's life, and everyone's life changes, and I completely appreciate anything that you guys do contribute. It's not a big deal if you, you know, at some point cannot do it the way you used to. All right? Don't feel bad. <sighs> Fair enough? All right. Now, as for Patreon, I already addressed this. I already told you guys. I don't know. Should I have sub goals based off of subs on Twitch? Should I have a monthly goal change back to Patreon? I don't know what to do, because it seems like no matter which I do, right... It's not really working at this point. I, no matter what, I find a way. I find a way to survive. So, I don't know what you guys think I should do next. Um, I'm very open to feedback. Right now, I'm not super worried about Patreon declining. I don't even know why people are sitting there staring at the fucking total. Quite frankly, it sounds to me like a bunch of drama queen negative people who just want to say anything negative. Right? Why are you getting so upset about this? Like, seriously. You, you, I mean, these it sounds like people that are concerned. Sounds like people who are like, I mean, you're up there every day saying that you need money, you gotta pay bills, you gotta pay taxes, you got these two mortgages, yada, yada, yada. And it sounds like people that are just concerned and be like, well, hey, maybe you should start looking at it, take a closer look at some of your uh, your revenue streams and you're getting upset at, at them because of it. It's not a matter, and, and how, is it, does, how does that make you look bad, Phil? Is that you subconsciously recognizing that, you know what, I'm not as entertaining as I thought. You know what? I'm not really giving anybody their money's worth. You know what? All those people who threw all their money at me, I didn't really give them a quality product. I don't provide quality content. Is that what you're upset about, Phil? Just saying. Truth hurts. And I just want to say anything negative that they can oh, um, to try to make me look bad. So, oh my God, Patreon supports now. Phil is failing. Blah, blah, blah. No. That's not happening. No. Like I said, okay. the streams have been very supportive. All right. Very supportive. <clears throat> the streams have been very supportive. Very supportive. All right. So don't feel bad. It's not. That's not the case. It's just that right now I think the problem is. Free. I do think that sadly, <laughs> uh, there's not a focus. I was focused on Patreon for a long time. Then people said, "Don't focus on that. Focus on the streams because the streams are doing good." So I focused on the streams. Now that's not working. So what do I? You know what do I do? I need your suggestions and your support, guy. Right now, everyone in the stream chat is saying. Change the sub goal to 420 subs. Now, that would be, I mean, that would be more realistic to hit by the end of the month. At the same time, um, that would kind of be a defeat, a defeat because as you guys know... I need the, that money. I really do. I need that money uh -huh. to pay my bills. Sure let the green roll in. Give their money. Give their money. The money is mine, and I want the money. You know, the goal was originally 475. At the beginning of this month, we had 450 subs, okay? But then again, that was artificially inflated from the Bloodborne stuff. All right, how about this, guys? Directly based... You're talking about this is such a defeat. Phil, you need to get over your pride, man. You really do. You need to get over your pride. Right now, you need to pay bills. Right now, you need to hit a goal that you need to set a goal that's feasible. How is it that earlier in the year, you were knocking on like 550, 600, 650? That's what you were knocking on earlier on in the year. And now, you're barely able, you can't even make five. You can't even make 450. You know what I'm saying? Like, what happened? Something should have, and yet nothing's clicked. I'm just another asshole that's like, oh, he just brings all this negativity and, you know, nah, 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 nothing that he says has any substance to it. Or, or everything he says has just a snid bit of truth to it. I dare say that I've, that I've, as well as others, have predicted your failure down, damn near to the T. Damn near. I'm just waiting to see what happens when Twitch drops. And then after that, that's going to be really, really interesting. Because then you have no choice to come back to the gladiator pit. 
you have no choice to come back to Sparta. Or whatever you want to whatever you want to call this. YouTube to you, Phil. You have no choice but to come back to this. And how long do you think you're going to last here? You know what I'm saying? Like, how is that going to work for you? You're going to sit there and take open challenges for, on Street Fighter? You know what I'm saying? For the rest of your days? You could. You could make quite a bit of money. You know what I'm saying? You could. But, you know, what are you really going to do? And what's the plan? You don't have a plan. Oh, okay. So then it doesn't, it's not clicking that you're going to fail then? You can't ride by the seat of your pants forever. It's not going to work. Gautopia is falling. It's, it's, I'm not even saying this from a, to be malicious. It's, it's really happening, Phil. And you're not doing anything to plan. You're not doing anything to try to watch out for yourself. Nor, and then, <laughs> I'm going to sound like a jerk when I say this, but then it's not even about you, Phil. You got Kat there too, if she's still there. So you have to think about more than just yourself. I know that's hard. I know that's something that's outside of your realm. But you're going to have to try, buddy boy. You're going to have to try, Dave. It's not just you, it's Cat too. Rhyming accidentally. Eh, just food for thought. All right. Directly based on your feedback, guys. I'm going to lower the sub goal. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Whoa. Whoa. This is the last time I could do it, by the way. I'm not doing it again. We're going to do it 425. How about that? He'll do it again. He'll drop the 400 probably next month. We'll lower it to 425. If we can end this month at 425 subs, it will be very positive. <laughs> very positive. You went from 475 to 425. <sighs> Jesus Christ. You did that in 22 days. Yeesh. All right. And <clears throat> I think that uh, it would be some positive, you know, growth. So we're doing it. 425. We're at 4 to 25 subs. That's it. I can't move it again. I can only move the bar so much. I've already moved it by 50 subs. So, there you go. So now, we are, what, 40 subs away, roughly? That's actually pretty interesting, too. I was snorping those right. The, the Pig Roast Colt, aka the PR Colt, is a, made up of about 300, 300 plus uh, pay pigs. But yet, he wants 425 subs. Or, let's go a little further, he wants 475 subs. You need to stick within your fan base. You know what I'm saying? You really need to stick within your fan base. You're, you're, you've branched out to... You've reached too far. You know what I'm saying? You've reached way too far. You have to stay within your means. And plan accordingly. Which, I know it requires some effort. I know that seems like a lot, Phil. But if business class told you anything, if that degree that you have, wherever you have it hanging at, means anything, you know what I'm saying? When, when times are good, you save. And when times are bad, you, you, you hold off until you really need to use it. I don't know. I guess his university didn't, didn't teach him that. Whatever. Definitely do that. That's definitely doable in the next week with all the new content. All right, guys? So there you go. I'm doing 4:25. Wow! I try. I've been trying to think up multiple goals, and it, nothing seems to. Remember, I, a few months ago, I said I'll start up a new cooking show with Cat. No one, no one subbed for that. <laughs> I did call that. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. All right, let's talk about that for a minute. That was a bad idea. That was a bad idea, and it was a bad idea for a couple of different reasons. But then I also have to give some credit where credit is due as it pertains to his cult. That they didn't want that. They knew what that was going to be. You know, people in Phil's fan base said, do not put her out there. Do not put her out there. Please don't. And Phil didn't listen. So what did they do? They took action. They voted with their wallets. If you weren't going to protect her, they chose to. That's a way of looking at it. Is that really the case? Eh, I don't know. But that's the way I like to look at it. I'd like to think that they were able to see... They were, able, they were able to see the bigger picture. And they realized that you were just going to put her in harm's way. So they were like, you know what? We have to take a stand and, and do what's right. And so they did. 
You should applaud them for that, Phil. You should applaud them for that. But now you're starting to get desperate, which is showing a lack of creativity. Snow Brunel also believes that shows a lack of charisma. It shows a lack of a lot of things, to be honest with you. So what are you going to do? So that cooking show was a bad idea anyway, because it's just going to be her cooking, you holding the camera, and setting the table. It's basically it's basically DSP tries it with Panda all over again, which is what I think he wanted to do. And the thing is, how are you going to get convinced? Sorry, how are you going to convince Cat to cook all those meals when she has a job, or allegedly she has a job? How are you going to make that work? I thought money's tight, Phil. How are you going to get the? How are you going to go ahead and get the ingredients for all those things? It's going to take some time and effort on her part to get all the meals prepared and everything anyway. The prep work is where the majority of the work is in. Sorry, Phil. For people who know how to cook, they know what I'm talking about. So where were you going to fit into all that anyway? And it just wasn't a good idea. You know what I'm saying? People wanted to see poorly cooking with the king. That's what people wanted. That's what people were willing to pay for. You didn't want to do that because you were like, oh, all the meals I can think of, oh, I've already cooked them all. Buy a cookbook. Actually, go online and download recipes. There are a bunch of different apps that you can do it from for free. Or for free, sorry. You know what I mean? And just try those. Try a couple of them. It's no big deal. It's supposed to be cooking poorly with the king anyway. Or cooking with the king, whatever the case may be. Anyway, it just do that. The only thing that's going to cost you is ingredients. You could live stream it. That's the, that's the real kicker. He would have the YouTube video. Oh my God, Phil. You would have the YouTube video, right? So that's on YouTube. It's going to get hits. You're going to have the live stream, which everybody's going to come out to see that. And it was a Patreon goal. So people were going to pay you to, to do all this anyway. And you're going to get money while you're streaming. For, I've given you four very good reasons to do that. And all you got to do is do it once a month. You do it once a month for like three months and see how it, and see how it works out. If you really feel that financially it's not worth your time, then give it up. But three months is all you have to do with this. And just imagine what, what could come out of that. But whatever. All right, I'll do a funny DSP tries it. No one subbed for that. Yeah, that's just a waste of time. Though. That's just stupid. You pick, you pick really stupid items. If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do that, here, let me give you some more advice. If you're gonna do a, a, a like, uh, like shown on TV or as seen on TV type item, let people pick it. Let them choose what it is. You can get it at a, I don't know. I guess it depends on whatever's in this area. Like a, I don't know. Like or even on Amazon, you can find some of those same type of things on Amazon also. He doesn't have to go to his stores if he doesn't want to do that. But let them pick. Go ahead and have them... Go ahead, set a poll on Twitter. Or no. Go to your forums. Nah, even though I... Yeah, no. Twitter. Twitter's better. Go to Twitter and have... And, and let people pick, I don't know, 10 different items. Or whatever the case may be. And then... Or no. Ooh, even better. Pick five items and then let... And then let the fan base itself choose five items of their own. And then you could go ahead and over the span of the month, you could literally, you know, cut, you know, you could cut the fat on whatever isn't, you know, getting enough, you know, getting enough uh, attention, essentially. You know what I'm saying? So you would need like a week to determine what the five particular items that your fan base wants. And then you put it up on the poll. So you now they have 10 choices and then let them vote. Let them vote. And you could actually go through Patreon to have them do that. To let th so if they contribute to Patreon five bucks or more, then they can vote. Then their vote counts towards, you know, whatever that goal is going to be. And then there you go. And then you unveil it on stream. And then the YouTube video goes up. You'll catch your donations. You're essentially getting paid to do it anyway. Come on, Phil. This shit ain't hard. I don't stream. I don't do any of this dumb shit. I just watch the dumb crap you do. This, uh, this isn't hard to figure out. It just takes a little bit of forethought. It takes a little bit of planning. And more importantly, you have to be willing. And you don't have those things. All right. I'm going to do an amazing, never-before-done fighting game challenge that's going to be full of rage and salt, which is what you guys want to see. It's Why would they go to you for that when they can just go to a compilation made by 
yet again. So let's go. Let's go with some of my favorites: Mimology 101, Mighty D, uh, Volt Boy, David Davison, um, S. Uh, S. Julius Cruz, amongst others. I could just they could go to them for that. Most of them do. So seeing it with you is irrelevant. And that, why would they go to your stream when they can do what apparently they're doing already and just go to Almighty Tevin's stream and watch you do it? The ch Almighty Tevin's uh, chat's way better. <laughs> it's way more amusing. My four takes is fine. It's going to be great. No one's subbing for that. So it's a, it's a boring goal. You're going to play the game. And to be honest with you, that goal is kind of dumb because you're going to play the game regardless. It's like that's going to be his PUBG. Kind of. But you're gonna play the game either way. So why would why would they contribute to something that they know you're gonna play regardless? And you're gonna keep playing for years on end. Seems kind of stupid. And I'll I'll talk about that in a minute. So what do you you know what I mean? So what do you want then? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> wow. All right, well, the cop cheered again. And he said, do you want to play the fucking game? <laughs> it's sad that people will make false promises on streams. It makes your effort gone for nothing and the fucker laughs at you. Don't let this feel, let you feel down and focus on making the stream full of positivity. Well, the thing is, I don't. Like, that's the thing. I like for, in particular, yesterday, okay? Yesterday, I was playing Ultra Street Fighter 2. This guy comes in and he claims that if I get 10 straight wins, right, he's going to donate $100. So Then Phil did it for the wrong reasons anyway. Because you don't do it for the few. You do it for the many. Okay, there's a there was a group of you already there to watch Phil stream. He should be basically putting his best foot uh, best foot down to be one entertaining. He's not very good at that, or at least be to at least win. So for him to pander to this one person giving him a hundred dollars compared to the masses that was there who contributed that much if not more to him seems a bit disrespectful. It seems a bit off. And the fact that you would let him cuck you like that speaks a lot to you as an individual. But I'll say, it's not owed. He should be taking that for, as a, he should be taking that with a grain of salt anyway. Phil believes that everything's expected to him, that everybody has to pay a due to him. No one doesn't owe him shit. That's why people hate it when I give Phil advice. I don't owe Phil that, and they're right. I don't. I don't. It's just my opinion to say it though. And if Phil, even if Phil does do it, he'll still jam it up. He'll still screw it up. He doesn't think like I do. I can, I can at least anticipate how he's going to think, but he can't think like me. He can't think like anybody else but himself. And for him, it's always the easy way. Always. I would much rather get up every day and earn my money and actually earn it than sit on my ass and have someone give it to me, especially someone who's a kid. <laughs> For someone that has to use mommy and daddy's credit card. If you find me entertaining and you want to and you want to donate money, that's cool. But for me to get up every morning and expect you to give it to me, that's disrespectful. He says this during a match that's already going on. All right. The match ends. I lose. And he says, oh, well, you lost. Wait, wait a minute. Well, first of all, I didn't even acknowledge that you said anything. <laughs> I didn't even fucking acknowledge that you said anything. So it wasn't, it wasn't even like a challenge or a wager. It was this guy making up his own criteria in his head, right? Then I got 24 straight wins. The guy motherfucking vanishes from stream chat and never reappears. Well, like you said, you didn't acknowledge it, and he made up his own criteria. Since you didn't acknowledge it, the deal was there was no deal. There was no deal to be struck. You, wh wh why are we even complaining about this then? My mouth is full of salt. So it's like the guy was never serious. Because if he were serious, he would have laid down real criteria. He would have talked to me and acknowledged that I knew that it was going on, right? But the thing is, I didn't pay, even pay attention. Like, I honestly didn't even know this guy. So, in truth, it's your fault. Because you said that he put the challenge out to you, and he laid out the criteria. You said that you didn't acknowledge him. So he probably took it at face value. Oh, well, Phil's not interested. And then walked, and then just stepped away from it. So, since you didn't put your best foot forward to at least acknowledge that challenge, or, hey, I'll take that bet. It sounds like you let a hundred dollars walk away from. It sounds like you let a hundred dollars walk away, more than the fact that you got ripped off or you got slighted in it some type of way. It sounds like you screwed yourself. Just saying. I had said this stuff until already, like, like I had had like eight or nine wins. Then people were saying, "Wow, Phil's one win away," and I was like, "What are people talking about?" And I started reading it. And I was like, "Oh, apparently someone had made this challenge, right?" So, 
Uh, yeah. Uh, pretty ridiculous that people do that stuff, right? The guy was, the guy was... How is it ridiculous, though? Like you said, you didn't acknowledge it until people brought it up to your attention at, you know, when you were at nine wins, and by then it was already too late. You never acknowledged it. So for him, he just looked at it as the bet was off. There was no bet that was on in the first place. So, shut up. <laughs> now you just kind of complaining just to complain at this point. Full of crap. Anyway, so the bottom line is, in general, I usually don't even know when people are doing these kind of challenges or whatever. Um, now, that's a lie. Because anybody who's watched you on stream, or at least watched your YouTube videos, your eyes are glued on that, on that uh, stream chat. It really is. Like, more so than you actually being... You actually paying attention to the game, so let's not let's not you know sell ourselves short here, Phil. You have a pretty good idea of what goes on in your stream chat. Real talk, I just don't know when this is happening because I'm usually playing the game. Time to play the game. Yeah, I'm a gamer. That's pretty funny. Yeah, a lot of people. That's what I mean. I'm in the middle of a heated match. Oh, now I'm gonna make a wager for Phil. How can I see that? <laughs> now, now here's the deal, guys. Coming up, the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection is coming up in a week. There's going to be big potential for people to make these kind of challenges and stuff. Oh, so I hope boy. you guys will be more serious about it. Maybe we can establish a criteria where if you're going to do stuff like that, please acknowledge that I know about it. So maybe try to do it between matches, and I'll try to read the stream chat between matches. This is the part that I was talking about earlier, but I'll use that as my closing statement as it pertains to uh, <laughs> Street Fighter 3rd anniversary. I'll use that as my closing statement. And then acknowledge it before a match starts so we at least know what's going on. Okay? Because if I don't even know what's happening, then there's no point in even doing it, right? So, let's do that. Let's let's make it. All right. Let's make it so that Jesus Christ, you're really begging for bets here. That's that's damn. That's a shame, Phil. People are going to try to make really challenges is. or whatever. That's a shame. The upcoming Street Fighter collection. All right. Please do it between matches and uh, wait for me to acknowledge it verbally on stream before we kind of kind of activate it, or else what's the point? Wait for me to okay. acknowledge it. It's disgusting, in my opinion. It's immoral. It's greed. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self-control. Nope. Uh, Shuck Morris has cheered and says, Would you be a porn actor? They make good money and don't have to work too much with decent amounts of relaxation time. Even though I certainly would not say that I am uh, poorly endowed. I have a micro penis, and then when I did the research, I found out that basically there's no way to make your dick grow. My dick is annoying. Being a dude with balls and a dick can be annoying. I don't want this. What is this bullshit? <laughs> At the same time, I don't think that I have the prowess <laughs> that would allow me to become a porn actor. Plus, mm. I have, you know, not exactly the most attractive body, so <laughs> I don't think people would want to see that. Jeez. Save the pig. <laughs> What the heck? A pig with a party hat. Wow. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Piggy. You see it, Piggy? <laughs> That's hilarious. Save the pig, the game. The whole game, we're trying to save the pig's life. Help! What pasta do you prefer? I prefer a penne. Help! <laughs> Easy to eat. <laughs> All right, all right, there we go, guys. Okay, closing statements. So, Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. Okay, I, I can't remember if it comes off, if it comes out on like the 25th or whatever the case may be. Here's the thing. <clears throat> Phil believes, I, I think he's getting it for PS4 and then someone's donating it, donating it to him on Xbox. I can't remember exactly what the details are. Details are. But Phil, once you get on the PS4, or Xbox, respectfully. It's going to be a whole different ball game. It's not just Switch. You know what I'm saying? It's not the Nintendo Switch. No, you know, not taking any shots at it. But the the player pool is going to become large now. I'm talking about... there. You, you went up against some very, very good players on the Switch. Excuse me. When you get the PlayStation and Xbox, I would assume that the skill level is definitely going to rise. I mean, don't be wrong. He's still going to... He's going to have his freebies. And he's going to be able to skim by for a little while. But when the real... When the real pig hunters come out, he's going to have problems. He's really going to have problems, especially if he makes himself accessible on both consoles. He's going to run into some major hitters. He's going to run into people who have really heard of him from the fighting game community or just people on Twitch that are Street Fighter heads. He's going to run into some real comp, and it's going to be a problem. And uh, 
it's going to be interesting to see how well you fare, Phil. Because since you do stream everything and everything, every match is chopped up and put on YouTube, um, you're you're going to be a. I I would have to say for some people, you're going to be a stepping stone, for sure, Phil. Not to say that means much, because you're just a stone, but that's more likely what's going to happen. But then it's not even just that. I'm just talking about just the casual players. I'm talking about guys who might be semi wanting to become pro. What happens when you fall into when you run into some real pro players, Phil? Some people that took care of themselves over the years, who kept their eye on the ball, whose reactions and reflexes aren't gone, whose eyesights aren't poor. What are you going to do then? So you're sitting here begging for donations. Or not begging for donations, you're begging for bets. You know what I mean? You want to try to, you want people to basically give you pity bets. You know what I mean? For this game. But what happens when you go up against real killers? What happens when the real hitters come out? Boy, your bacon's going to get cooked. Now, I saw you say on a, a couple streams back that, oh, I'll need some time to adjust and it's going to be different and so on and so forth, which it will. And you have to give Phil some credit for that. It is going to take him some time to adjust. But he, ha doesn't, he hasn't taken into account what's going to happen when it comes to the realignments. And that's, just what, that's what some of these players are going to do, though. It's going to be interesting. And Phil, I'll run into you eventually. What my gamer tag is will be irrelevant to you. You'll know me when you see me. If not, when it gets posted online, you'll know. So, there you go on that. And it's not even just me. There's a couple of people. There's a couple of people that I know that are looking to come get you. Should be fun. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is DSP News. Always late, never breaking, unreliable coverage that you can't count on. A GTG Network and Productions. Productions. I'm your host slash anchor GTG, and I'm signing off. End the broadcast. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy.